So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to those one who can uh, listen to us right now. Uh, we have big event here in in uh, Glasgow. Thousands of people here joined the great event of United Nations. It's a big thing, but at the same time, it's going to be quite a problem to enter the headquarters of the events. So today, we still losing some of our colleagues who was who were really eager to join us in this session. So nonetheless, I would like to present myself. And as far as we don't, we don't have uh, uh, those responsible for collaborating these discussions. So we would slightly change the scenario of our meeting. So we will present ourselves by ourselves <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> instead of moderator. And then we'll start uh, the discussion. Uh, I have a couple of uh, challenging proposals uh, as a speaker, of course, not as a moderator. So, but we'll uh, see how it would go on. So, uh, the, today's discussions uh, is uh, signed as the following. The role of, of national public development banks in financing green transaction. So, I am, uh, my name is Sergei Strachak, I am senior banker at uh, State Development Corporation of the Russian Federation, uh, more known as Nyashekinom Bank, which will celebrate its 100 years anniversary in a couple of years. So previously, I worked for the Ministry of Finance for quite a long period of time for G7, G8, G20, IPEC, uh, and the other multilateral multi forum. So I am not a stranger to this event. Nonetheless, I am a stranger to, to, to play a role of moderator. So uh, it's my presentation first. Please, uh, Beryl, your, your first uh, intervention in, uh, during this session. OK, thank you, Sergey. And thank you for inviting me on this uh, panel on the role of uh, Public Development Bank in financing the green uh, transition. Let me briefly introduce myself. I am uh, Beryl Boutey. I'm the Secretary General of the IDFC, the International Development Finance Club. Um, and um, um, I'm part of the Agence Française de Développement as well. Uh, AFD is currently chairing uh, the IDFC. Uh, that's why uh, AFD is hosting uh, the Secretariat of the club. And uh, actually, we are here at, uh, in, uh, in Glasgow uh, on the IDFC uh, pavilion. So um, I'm very glad to, um, to join you uh, today uh, for, this, uh, for this panel. Uh, thank you very much. And we have uh, on uh, line with us uh, Maria Jose Narondo, if I am uh, s speaking in the right way, yeah. pronouncing your name in the right way. Please correct me. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Maria Jose Naranjo. How are you? How are you? Surviving here, you cannot imagine how it's not, it, how it's difficult to enter the headquarters, but we survived. We managed it, <laughs> and ready, you are joining us in this session. Okay, well, good morning for the Latin American ones, and good afternoon for you all over there. My name is Maria Jose Naranjo. I'm from Bancoldex. I'm the vice president of uh, strategic uh, cor corporate strategy. And uh, I don't know if uh, I can talk a little bit more about Bancoldex. Bancoldex is the development bank of Colombia. We are focused on SMEs, especially helping them to grow and to be more responsible in all the su sustainable projects that they're, um, that they're uh, um, environment, uh, that, um, addressing. So uh, it's a pleasure for us to be here as part of the IDFC, and uh, we're we're uh, looking forward to respond all your questions. 
Thank, thank you for the first intervention in, in our panel. So uh, we hope that uh, <coughs> Patrick Blan Bl Blamini, CEO of uh, DBSA from South Africa, will join us at some stage, we hope. So, and uh, we will have uh, a panel representing different continents. And <laughs> it's, this is a very interesting story about our club. And uh, I think from this point of view, we are unique. Uh, and uh, tomorrow we will have uh, an annual meeting. So we can s summarize the activities of the club in general and our members in particular. But today uh, we will uh, discuss the role of National D uh, Development Bank or uh, uh, other institutions of uh, national dimensions which play in a, an important role in climate, climate financing. We are very thankful for the, for the club presenting during the meeting of uh, finance in common uh, the broad picture of the national development institutions. And in, it turned to be that uh, those who we consider for years the main place, I, I mean multilateral de development banks as the main place in the green finance and well, it's, uh, now we can put it under big question because uh, national banks, national development banks, they are in maybe small in uh, volumes of their activities, but they are huge in numbers. And as far as I am concerned, for me it is much more important that national development institutions are closer to the fields, closer to the clients, uh, closer to uh, the projects which really influence the clim climate uh, changes and the environment. So, uh, uh, dear colleagues, it's f my first uh, challenge of my uh, first in intervention and questions. Do you agree with me that uh, the s story of those who are play bigger role in the climate f financing can be slightly re resort because of uh, the work done by our club, by uh, Jean Francais de Développement in particular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for me, it was a, quite a big surprise. So do you agree with me that in the coming years, the small national development, fi development financing institution could play a much bigger role uh, than we considered it, pre it previously. So yes. your floor is yours, please. Thank you. And um, actually, it's uh, what all IDFC is about, you know, putting together uh, a group of uh, like-minded institutions uh, to do more on climate. The club uh, was created uh, 10 years ago, and actually we will celebrate tomorrow our 10 years anniversary. Uh, and this, um, this was a group of PDBs willing uh, to do more uh, on climate. And uh, then back in uh, 2019, uh, the IDFC call, uh, called along with the World Federation of DFI for a summit of all public development banks in the world. Um, and we did some research uh, <laughs> uh, during these past two years, and we found that uh, worldwide we have more than 500 public development banks, accounting for 2.3 trillion of uh, total investment yearly, uh, nearly 10% uh, uh, of global investments. So yes, I agree that uh, public development banks have a key role uh, to support uh, the energy transition. Um, and to, yes, and to support uh, the objectives of the Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and the finance in common uh, movement, let's say, um, is pursuing uh, multiple objectives. First, of course, is to uh, explain uh, what, is, what are public development banks. Should they be subnational, national, regional, uh, international? Um, and um, 
uh, really uh, also the, the, the another objective of this coalition is to work together and to better cooperate uh, among public development banks to align our portfolio to align ourselves and our, and our clients on, uh, on 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 the objective of the Paris Agreement and and the SDGs and then um, to 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 cooperate more uh, broadly uh, with uh, with uh, the, 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 the broader uh, financial ecosystem, uh, and that is why we are uh, discussing uh, and mobili mobilizing uh, all our all uh, our stakeholders, uh, namely the private sector, the civil society, uh, think tank, and researchers. Uh, to really align the whole uh, financial chain uh, on uh, on climate and uh, on SDGs. Mm -hmm. So, dear, dear colleagues, um, Patrick from uh, Development Bank of South Africa joined us. So, uh, my first question would be to, uh, to you the same. Do you believe that a local, locally based uh, development finance and institutions would play a much bigger role in the coming years in comparison to the multilateral development banks. They are big, they are important, but uh, small ones are closer to the um, fields, closer to the citizens, closer to the uh, settl settling the uh, local social issues and problems in line with sustainable de development goals. So, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, my, my sincere apologies. Uh, we, we got caught by the traffic coming in. <laughs> I, see. Uh, I, I, I fully agree that the small development uh, uh, banks have a very critical role to play. One, they are the policy instruments of the states. You have nationally determined uh, uh, contributions that are country specific which then talks to the local development banks to help their government drive and fulfill and achieve their national determined contributions. So these are policy instruments that are quite seized with the reality in their specific country, their specific conditions. And also it talks to how these countries can then be able to demonstrate to the rest of the world how their entire economy system is driving towards their net zero position come I 2050. See. See. So they really do have an absolutely critical role and also they uh, can also be a, an instrument to achieve uh, to, to access uh, grant funding and concessionary funding in the in institu strategic institutions like the, 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 the Green Climate Fund. It is through them that they can then be able to make the accessibility to the GCF to the rest of the country in making sure that the various sectors of the economy also do their respective part in making sure that the economy is driving towards a low carbon future. I see. Thank you very much. By the way, due to the outcomes of your research, we in Russia uh, start thinking about what's happening in Russia's regions where federation uh, quite a lot of uh, autonomous authorities we are looking forward what they can do in terms of setting up their own uh, local financial development institutions how we can support them in these activities so maybe having in mind that we, as a federation, we have uh, 83 um, regions, and if regions will set up its own <laughs> development banks, so the numbers you uh, managed to calculate will increase almost 100. <laughs> so, <It's> well, <laughs> so uh, it's really, uh, well, we never thought about this at, at my institution where big, influencing the different activities. So maybe uh, our uh, advantages is that we are both a financing institute and a methodological center. The government allows uh, us to be so. So the National Economic Bank stands behind the uh, taxonomy, uh, taxonomy prepared uh, for my country, for, for, for my institutions. So uh, 
from this point of view, of course, we we have this opportunity to look at the situation in, from the systemic point of view. So, and by the way, I uh, took notice that in South Africa, Treasuries is standing behind taxonomy and uh, uh, already managed to prepare this volume of text uh, uh, on the ta uh, taxonomy. Do your institution in was involved somehow? Did your institution uh, involved was involved in, the, in this activity in preparing taxonomy for, for your economy? We report to the Ministry of, of Finance, uh, which is National Treasury in South Africa, as, as the DBSA. And, and therefore, we in, interact and engage with them on a number of strategic issues. Uh, because, again, this taxonomy talks to the just transi tra uh, transition, a strategy for the country. Mm -hmm. and, and as such, we as the Development Bank have to look at how do we then support that strategy to drive the infrastructure sector and various critical sectors that we find that are aligned to our mandate okay. to make sure that the country achieve its, its, its revised uh, national determined contribution. I see. Thank you. Maria, what about you? Uh, you mentioned that you're mostly involved in the uh, financing small and medium enterprises. It, it means that uh, for Colombia, to have local uh, institu financing institutions would mean quite a lot. Or, I, I, or maybe I'm mistaken and uh, you have a fully centralized approach to the, uh, this kind of work, especially having in mind that uh, in investment in uh, green uh, projects uh, needs quite a lot of money. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Well, um, I can say that as a development bank focused on SMEs, here in Colombia, Bank Coldex has learned to identify the different types of green projects that entrepreneurs have implemented for the mitigation of environmental impact. Uh, that's the first thing I would like to say. The second thing is we've been learning from others and being part of the IDFC has been a lot because we've been um, we've been learning and how to approach, how to structure, how to address, how to um, evaluate green projects. And we've been there for maybe six or ten, ten years. I'm sorry. Are, are you hearing us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. That, that would be the second thing. Maybe I would like to point out also that here in Colombia recently, <coughs> the, fi the financial superintendency of Colombia has taken the lead in the creation of a green taxonomy. So that means that banks have to learn how to um, identify, identify green projects. And we have to, uh, as a development bank, be kind of a pioneer in how to understand that kind of projects. Uh, as, as we all know, development banks have to fulfill um, market um, a failure. And here in Colombia, that is a market failure. Green projects are no, um, are, 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 are difficult to point out, are difficult to, defined so the superintendency will help us in that in that lead and finally um of course colombia's green taxonomy seeks to facilitate the identification of projects with environmental objective as 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 far as the global goal of the country and again bank holders will have to lead and will have to be a pioneer in that sense we have to remember that all development banks has this um, um, the, 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 the triage the, as the good intersection of the bank as a development bank, entrepreneurs and the, and the financial system. So if we as a development bank meet the three of them, we are sure that we are going to find green projects, sustainable projects, and we'll help the economy to 
growth in a sustainable way. So here maybe is in Colombia to respond to your question, the superintendency, the financial superintendency of Colombia has taken the lead of the taxonomy, but also we've been learning as being part of the IDFC and learning from others that have, have been there for a longer time that how green projects work and how we have to address them and evaluate them. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, uh, um, we have uh, another pan panelist with us. It's uh, Anton Zveta from Minister of Economy of the Russian Federation. Anton, we started discussing, as far as I had to um, mo moderate this, and I changed the, the, the rules. So, and we start discussing with the topics not commonly uh, discussed during these events about the, the role of small regional development uh, institution on the development banks. And uh, uh, frankly speaking, I don't know how many of such small development institutions are in the, in the Russian federations, in the Russian territories. Do you know something about this? And what do you think about the uh, actual role of these small institutions, which are small in in terms of capital, in terms of uh, assets, but as it is put in the, in the report, they sometimes they are very important for local uh, economies, for small countries, all globally. From this point of view, we, we can say that they can they are playing and can play much bigger role than many people uh, think about. So, what your attitude to this? Uh, I, I hope you can uh, hear me well. And uh, please forgive me being late. Uh, unfortunately, the, the road from the negotiation room to here took a bit lo longer than I expected. Um, well, and, and thank you for having me here today. So uh, I, I think that, you know, when, when we t talk about regional institutions in general and uh, s smaller institutions, I, I think that whenever we talk about sustainable development in general and when we talk about uh, finance in particular, I think that local knowledge and regional knowledge is something that is very important for for us to be able to localize any any uh, tasks and um, uh, pathways that we are trying to follow. We're trying our constituencies to follow. So, I think that um, regional uh, and not just regional, uh, subnational, local institutions have a great role to play there. Uh, first and foremost, be because they have a history of dealing with local uh, constituencies, local businesses. They know the local environment well. I mean, the business environment, not just the actual environment. Um, and I, I have a case for you, actually, on this. So um, in Russia, I'd say we are relatively early in terms of localizing SDGs and the SDG agenda in general. But uh, we already have Large international companies are, of course, very well aware of the, of the agenda, and VEB, of course, is as a pu public bank, is uh, very much at the forefront of that. And we have multinational corporations. That is very clear. But on a local level, we're still uh, getting a grip of it. But we still we, we already have a lot of cases when we have, for example, in uh, in the Rostov region, which is uh, a region in the southern part of Russia, we have an interesting collaboration between the local statistical agencies and a private bank uh, which is uh, helping to bridge the understanding of how the, this region is moving towards sustainable development, local finance, local businesses, and the statistical system. So there's um, basically a multi-stakeholder partnership going on. And uh, it's a very interesting case because w uh, when we go, um, and uh, I deal mostly with uh, international issues and presenting what Russia is doing on international fora, and it's always, I always have something to say about this, right? So because uh, it is, it's good for me. I feel, I feel, I feel um, proud that there are cases that I can present, and uh, the Rostov region is one of the few regions in Russia who have prepared a regional assessment of SDG uh, achievement, and uh, this is not very uh, commonplace for for Russian regions, and. Um, it's particularly important, this case is important because it is a partnership between a local bank, a financial institution, and the local government. So there are cases already there, and I think there is this understanding that uh, a bank that operates locally 
has the necessary expertise and understanding of how the local economic environment works and what are the sustainability needs and opportunities there. Uh -huh. So uh, the ministry will support the promotion of local de development institutions in the coming years. Well, if, if you can agree with the Minister of Finance to fund them. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that, that is the most uh, important part of, the, of this, of this <laughs> process, is agreeing with the Ministry of Finance. <laughs> so, uh, dear colleagues, let me switch to another topic. Uh, once again, it, I prepared it in advance as, as a speaker, but I think it, it's going to be very interesting for all of you to discuss. I simply uh, uh, say the following. So, uh, Beryl already used the word uh, assign. Uh, the club issued uh, this book or this uh, report, SD SDG alignment. So, uh, the alignment appeared in a number of recent uh, uh, statements or declarations both G20 leaders, G20 ministers. Yes. So I would, I prepare, I can quote, but we will uh, waste time on this. What I'm thinking about, and there's no in, in, the, in this report, okay. how to align two absolutely different policy approaches. One, align PDB's activities with is, is SDGs, as he in report, and uh, align uh, our activities with the well-known difficult issues, how we can find bankable projects. So how it can be aligned? I, having in mind that even so, we are not looking for profit, we are looking for bankable projects. And bankable projects and uh, well, need to be somehow linked to sustainable development goals, and inside the goals there are social di dimensions. Social dimensions uh, projects, <laughs> well, for me it's rather difficult to imagine how they can be bankable. So, Patrick, it's for you. You are the head of the big institutions. Uh, you will suppose to send instructions to the, your staff. Please align these two things. How they can be aligned? <laughs> it's, it's a delicate balance that can still be achieved if we prioritize accordingly. Because we all know that there are economic projects and there are social proje uh, projects. And, and as such, and inherently, projects that's, uh, that actually are social and are largely for social benefit like water, schools, roads, hospitals, they tend to require a lot of, of blended financing to make sure that they become sustainable and viable. And as the, as the development finance institutions or public development banks, that's the role that we're supposed to be playing when we are preparing the feasibility studies and, and structuring, financial structuring these projects. We need to make sure that these projects are well prepared, they are well structured, uh, so that they can become uh, bankable. bankable. Because when they become bankable, they then are able to attract the investors. So it is our role as the public development bank, the banks to make sure that we are able to put in that risk capital during the early phase of these projects and structure them in such a way that they can be able to give us because as the public development banks, we are also about the additionality or the developmental impact, the social benefit, if you will. So this is what then actually give rise to what we exist to do. Because when then projects are able to become bankable through various structuring and, 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 and securitization and credit risking uh, mechanism or mitigation mechanisms, they then become successful. So it is that job that we have to do. It's risk capital, but once it becomes bankable, we can be able to sit back and take pride that we make the project, we made the project successful, and to be able to then work and perform as expected. Mm -hmm. 
So it, it's a delicate balance that is quite achievable. But as the public banks or public development banks, together with governments, that is exactly what we have to do, especially when it comes to social projects or social infrastructure. Because economic projects, are, are, they tend to be invariably quite easy to take care of because they are easy to demonstrate their economic benefits and their viability and sustainability. But our, our job is to make sure that in, as part of the sustainable development goals, when we talk about leaving no one behind, it says there's a lot of social good that as public development banks we have to undertake and make sure that our people are able to benefit from the projects. Otherwise, you will have a situation where economic projects like energy become successful and ICT projects become successful. Meanwhile, social projects like roads and schools and you know, uh, the, 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 the projects that are for, for social good then gets left behind. And then the SDGs is saying we need to start looking at how do we deal with that. And also even the returns. You will not see serious returns from social projects because of the public good. But you will see more returns on the economic projects. We need to make sure that the economic projects are able to cross-subsidize the social projects so that we're able to achieve I see. this social good. I see. So my question didn't caught you by surprise. Very good, very good. Marie, what about you? How in Colombia you, you, you can uh, see this uh, challenge? And uh, to marry these two, uh, two policy issues, bankable projects and sustainable uh, development goals. Thank you very much again for your question. Well, here in Colombia, as you, as you were saying, we are a very big country. We have 32 different regions and we have to understand what is happening in every corner of the country. So that's the first thing uh, I think development banks have to point out. Um, besides that, uh, we, we are just in this moment designing our new strategy for the fourth next year. And we understand that sustainable will be a very important topic that we have to address. And we have to first learn how to address that kind of project, how entrepreneurs have to go to the banks and present their own projects. And as a bank, we have to learn how to um, evaluate that kind of, of, um, of uh, projects. So in our new strategy for the four next years, of course, uh, in order to meet not only our goals, but the goals of the country uh, and all the commitment in the Paris Agreement and all the and the two, 2030 goals also, we are focused on three, three things. The first thing is we have to uh, support all the green growth. That means energy efficiency and transition, circular economy and bioeconomy and climate change mitigation and adaptation. That's the first topic we will have to address. No, I repeat, not only we understanding, but helping entrepreneurs to understand how they have to uh, structure that kind of projects. The second topic is social welfare. We are strongly, uh, we strongly support the idea that development banks have not only to disperse a lot of money, but to generate impact. And here in, in Colombia, we are trying and we are understanding how to evaluate that impact, how, how, um, um, how, under, how helping un enterprises to understand that is not only about uh, growth in terms of money, but it's, it's in terms of welfare. So here, we are talking about gender equality with emphasis on women and diversity, like victims, disabled um, and minorities and youth people. So that is the second topic that we would like to address. And finally, we understand here in Colombia, there is a special chapter uh, in the ESDGs that is culture and creative industry that we like to support. We strongly believe that there is a, a very important potential of impact um, 
that that uh, chapter in the economy can provide. So we we are going to support that kind of um, uh, economic activities. Okay, thank you. So uh, as far as I understand, uh, the blended financing can be and probably play the biggest role in dealing with challenge with uh, uh, quite all obvious challenge is uh, the alignment uh, of our finances with green transactions. Uh, what about uh, Agence Francaise de Développement? Uh, blended financing, how important is for your institutions? Or you rely mostly on uh, funds raised on the markets and uh, you are working by yourself? Um, no, actually, we we do uh, we do have blended finance uh, from the fr French uh, government, but also from the EU, uh, the mm -hmm. European Union, and uh, European Commission, and uh, the Green uh, Climate Fund. So um, basically, at Agence Française de Développement, um, we implement uh, blended finance uh, to support. Uh, green transition uh, to do more on on climate finance. We launched um, um, almost uh, f uh, five years ago uh, um, an important program where, along with our partner, uh, the Green Climate Fund, um, which aims at uh, transforming um, financial systems for climate. Uh, and so we, we, we are doing it jointly with, uh, with the Green Crime Net Fund uh, and uh, our uh, uh, main objective is really to transform um, um, financial systems and to mainstream uh, climate finance within financial institutions, should that be a public institution or private institutions. So we are basically provided a credit line at a, a concessional rate uh, to our uh, beneficiaries and to, to our um, uh, partner within the financial ecosystem. Plus, uh, we um, um, uh, we are providing uh, technical assistance for them to uh, implement climate strategies, uh, to develop tools to um, to account uh, for uh, for uh, GHG emissions or for the SDG impacts. Uh, also to uh, integrate uh, more uh, climate risk within their credit uh, process. Um, and uh, at the end, uh, yes, to have hopefully more, more, more impact on the ground. So, um, yes, blended finance indeed, uh, it's a key. And actually within IDFC, uh, we are also leveraging on, 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 on this. And uh, we've built um, a strong partnership with the Green Climate Fund, we, uh, who actually contributed to the climate facility of the club. Uh, for uh, an amount of uh, uh, 700,000 uh, USD, uh, again, to prepare IDFC members uh, for the accreditation to the, the GCF or for the re-accreditation, um, and uh, also to prepare for bankable project, because I agree uh, it's, uh, it's key. Um, and this uh, readiness program will really support IDFC members um, on doing more on, on climate finance and reconciling uh, climate and impacts and uh, bankable projects. So thank you very much. Now I'd like to, uh, to take up uh, just a bit about targets. We know that many uh, uh, countries, many financial institutions have their own targets in terms of uh, green economy, uh, green transition. So. Uh, uh, this is going to be a question for all of us, but first of all, I'd like to ask this question about uh, Anton for f very simple r reason. Just recently, uh, within the Russia, uh, some important uh, decisions were taken. They are not well known. So, Anton, can you just briefly describe what, uh, what, uh, how they look like, and what it will mean for our external partners? Sure. So basically, the big news is that we have a long-term low emissions development strategy out now. And um, this is uh, a very important document mandated by the Paris Agreement. 
So um, in addition to the NDC that sets out our pathway to 2030, it's a document that sets out Russia's socioeconomic development with low greenhouse gas emissions all the way to 2050. And uh, this is perhaps, well, we, we've had a very uh, uh, rich year in terms of uh, news on Russian regulation on, on um, GG emissions. Uh, we've uh, finally had our um, law adopted on greenhouse gas emissions, which introduces mandatory reporting for large emitters. And the strategy is a very important part in that uh, sequence of events. And it's of, it was finally published um, over the weekend, and we hope that uh, it will be available in English soon as well. Now, the, um, the strategy allows for, um, for a trajectory of emissions that would allow us to reach carbon neutrality by 2060, which we believe is a, an, no later than 2060, which we believe is a very ambitious target for us, um, given the, <coughs> the structure of our economy and uh, uh, the efforts th that we are putting in right now. So, and this uh, this uh, strategy and the, the trajectory that we are outlining um, comp is comprised of a lot of elements, and uh, I would invite everybody to take a look at the document. But uh, in in essence, it's not just about technological modernization; it's about increasing removals. This is something that is very important for for our country. We see it as an important element in the global uh, fight ag against climate change and the fight for. Uh, reducing emissions and achieving the goals of the Paris Agreement. We think this is a very important element. So uh, increasing removals by sinks, forestry, ecosystems, uh, new technologies including carbon capture and storage. Of course, moving towards a cleaner uh, and a more sustainable energy mix. Uh, there are a lot of elements to that, but um, we think we have the, the numbers there and we have the trajectory right and we do have a pathway in front of us that is clear, which is something that we think we should all keep in mind when we talk about uh, trajectories and aims. It's, it's very easy to put a goal in front of us, but it's much more complicated <laughs> to, to have a clear pathway and um, talking about how do we actually achieve those ambitious goals. So, yeah, that is, uh, that's the news. <laughs> okay, very good news. And I hope that uh, we, we can sell finally, I mean, Russia as a sovereign can finally sell this to the audience of the, during this conference, I, I, we, we, well, we, we know that for quite a long period of time we were under the critics that we are standing behind events and comparing them to European Union, for example. Now we, we can say that no, let's see what's going to happen in a, in a couple of uh, coming years. As far as Russia is, co uh, my, uh, my institution is concerned, we still waiting for setting up our own targets. During common uh, finance and common meeting, I was impressed quite a lot by the uh, information of the European Investment Bank that they are going to have 50% of green projects in uh, in the 2030. So it's very ambitious. So, what about you, Patrick? How are your institution? Do you have targets? How quickly you will reach? Uh, carbon neutrality, for example, in, in your projects, or how are you? S all these targets for the for institutions is going to be quite a challenge. It uh, should not work like this. Uh, what's your yeah. attitude? No, thank you, thank you very much. I, because South Africa is a, as a as a, as a country have committed to net zero emission by 2050. We also then drafted our strategies mm -hmm. to align with the government's commitment uh, to net zero by 2050. And, and about, I think about 10 weeks ago, the cabinet of South Africa also approved very aggressive and revised uh, nationally determined uh, contributions to make sure that we, we move a lot. As you know that as, a, as South Africa, 90% of our power generation comes from fossil fuels, coal to be specific. And as such, many coal generation fleets have got to be retired much more earlier. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm sure you heard yesterday that uh, uh, the announcement that was made uh, by, by our president together with the, 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 the international partnership by the Republic of France, the, the Republic of Germany, 
the, the, the Republic, the, the Great Britain, the United States of America, as well as the European Union governments, how they are setting up this 8.5 billion US dollar fund mm -hmm. to help South Africa to move to a low carbon future and to look at retiring some of, uh, of, of, of her coal, uh, coal fired fleets much more earlier. Uh, that actually re, uh, re, uh, need to be to be retired to make sure that as a country we're able to get there because we are quite mindful that post COP26 uh, in pursuit of this low carbon future the global markets are going to start imposing a lot of carbon taxes and South Africa is also looking into carbon tax as well within the country and and as such it's going to be quite critical for us as a country to look at what strategies do we then come up with to make sure that our products into international markets still remains competitive because carbon tax is going to add a lot of cost to the, to the end user. And as such, it's going to be quite important that we come up with strategies that will make sure that we will reduce the low carbon footprints of our products to the rest of the world markets. So it is something that is very important, but it is something that we have as a, as, as a Development Bank of Southern Africa uh, come up with a strategy and a just transition plan that talks to a net zero by 2050. But again, it also talks to us reviewing our portfolios to make sure that our portfolio then becomes green as we are moving towards that. So the trajectory of greening our portfolio has started off quite well as well, because South Africa, we've been quite at the center of South Africa's uh, uh, renewable energy program, and which has been quite commended by the United Nations. And, and we are continuing on that trajectory. And the commitment by the international partners of South Africa now is also looking at how do we get into the, the, the green hydrogen fuel cells uh, in South Africa, how to also look at the electric vehicle manufacturing. As you know, that uh, transport is also quite a big emitter of greenhouse mm. gas emission. And various sectors of the economy will have to go through that robust process of assessing their footprints and coming up with mitigation strategies to make sure that we are able to reduce our carbon footprints as individual companies, as well as individual sectors and ultimately as a country. So it is something of, of critical importance that we had to come up with the strategy that talks to a net zero position by 2050. Thank you very much. Marie, what about your targets? Are they in a line, do they align with the national strategies and national uh, targets? Yes, of course we are. Uh, as a matter of fact, just yesterday our President Duque launched uh, the carbon neutrality strategy. And we, as a tool of public policy here in Colombia, we have to be aligned and we have to help the government reach that goal. That's the first thing I would like to say. Again, here in Colombia, as we have a lot of different regions, we have to understand that every region is in a different step. And uh, of course, our economy is depending especially on commodities. So we have to make a transition that will take time. And as the development bank, again, we have to understand that time. And in the meanwhile, of course, we have to help. And of course, we have to finance companies to be cleaner and to mitigate all the uh, effects on the economy on and of course, we think that innovation is a very important tool in that purpose. So we have an important portfolio in terms of financial um, and financial assistance and non-financial assistance in terms of uh, technical assistance, of course, to help them to structure that kind of project. And, um, and as I said, in the meanwhile, where we reach that special and that very very carbon neutrality goal, uh, we, are, we are helping them with other tools, uh, financial, financial tools, technical assistance, and, uh, and that 
Of course, here in Colombia, that will take time, but of course, we are aligned with the government in that in that new goal for the country. Okay, thank you very much. So, Beryl, we know where the, the Paris Agreement was agreed on. <laughs> <laughs> so, you cannot escape the answer this the same question. The same question. <laughs> okay, so let me give you some figures first uh, for the IDFC. Um, actually, IDFC reported in 2020 uh, 185 billion of climate finance, uh, of which um, uh, 34 billion dedicated to clean energy and energy efficiency. Uh, what, uh, what I want to say, what I'm trying to say, is that IDFC members as a collective are doing a lot uh, towards energy transition uh, and in supporting a uh, decarbonized um, economy. But of course, we are willing to do more. I see. Uh, and I agree uh, with you, pa Patrick, of course, uh, that we, we as public development bank, uh, banks, we are as a financial arm and tool of our governments. So at some point, um, we need to have our mandates transcend um, towards uh, the implementation of the objectives of the Paris Agreement. And uh, this, that is why this, it, is, it is part actually of our call within uh, the finance income of movement to strengthen uh, the PDB's mandate to do more on climate and on SDGs. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, dear colleagues, from your permission, I would like to switch from higher level topics, high level political topics to, to the ground, to the projects. So, uh, uh, I was much expressed by words using in the report I mentioned, where they make a uh, methodological proposal how we treat alignment. So, I quote, Alignment means behaving like SDG achievement enablers or green transition enablers. So, what, we, what do you think about this enabling uh, our partners in our, our uh, clients to behave like uh, green transition promoters? Can we really be... Uh, uh, can we really fulfill this role, play this role as a enabling uh, other institutions which come to us for funding to behave in uh, the way we are thinking about? So, uh, Patrick, floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, of course, we have a role <laughs> to play. Uh, and it becomes much more easier when you are aligned with your government. And, 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 and how we see ourselves playing the, 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 our role in this is, is, is w because you can be able to take the position that is aligned to your government. As I said, in the case of South Africa, we have aligned ourselves in terms of the net zero. But what we also are saying, we can then only fund projects that align to the just transition plan. So if you come to us and you want to be funded, we have to make sure that our, our processes really interrogate your projects to make sure mm -hmm. that is it ticking all the boxes in terms of sustainable development goals and the sustainability of this project? Is it ticking all the, the, the boxes in terms of alignment with the Paris Agreement? If there are gaps, we will ask you to go and, 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 and address those gaps before we can commit funding to it. That is how our processes have to talk to, to, to making sure that the alignment to this objective or net zero position mm -hmm. is, is, is undertaken by everyone who that actually we fund as a development bank. So that is, 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 is one way of getting us to look at that. But what is important here is, is the just transition plan. Because we are insisting on a, on a very clear and unambiguous just transition plan that you have to present to us for us to say we are, we are committing into funding your projects. For us, that is extremely important. 
Because when we are able to do that as public development banks, then you will be able to see a lot of alignments with various sectors of the economy in our countries and ultimately globally. Because I, I'm hoping that there's going to be a lot of concessionary funding that will also be available to act as an incentive to project sponsors that they are able to develop and, 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 and promote projects that are talking to, to the net zero position by 2050 and beyond, depending on your country's commitment. And tell me, please, uh, was it your own internal uh, corporate decision or you, will ha you had to change your mandate to, uh, to, ma to insert changes in your articles of agreement? So how are you... Uh, manage uh, to uh, to calibrate your policy uh, in this field. We've been working on on a just uh, 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 framework uh, 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 investment, a just transition framework, uh, investment framework. Sorry, so which talks to how we are going to align. Because I think about a week ago, we had a board strategy where we had to formulate the strategies that are talking to this. And before that, we had a meeting with the, the, the Presidential Climate Commission in South Africa and also other various players within the country. And, and from that, then we, start, and we also took into account the national determined contribution by the country and to say how then are we aligned to, this, uh, to, to, to that ambition knowing exactly what it means because I think I can also highlight here that as an as a, as a least developed and emerging economy you have a lot of competing objectives to deal with you have issues of poverty you have issues of inequality you have issues of of unemployment that you also have to grapple with and you you have issues so, so to, to to say how do we then make sure that the transition to the net zero emission or carbon neutrality position is as just as possible. Because just is about equitability, is about making sure that the vulnerable communities are also taken care of and that the communities that might be heavily impacted in economic sectors as a result of the, 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 the migration are also taken into account. So we are now looking at various options and, and as, as we're saying, our power utility uh, uh, retiring some of their generation fleet much more earlier, what then are we putting in place to make sure that we are able to compensate in terms of the jobs for the communities and come up with alternative jobs and come up with the retraining and reskilling of the affected communities so that you, they can continue to have dignity and to have access to, to, to the sustainability of their livelihoods as much as for uh, practically possible. That is what it meant for us as a development bank of Southern Africa. In, in case of uh, Russia's development corporations, uh, government decided to uh, interfere and to work in advance of events. So in <coughs> recently approved uh, a memorandum on financial policy, it was clearly prescribed for National Economic Bank that you are supposed to be green with your project by yourself in the relationship with your partners. There's no special targets, but the, uh, it's going to be translated into internal uh, documents. We will calibrate uh, them in the way the government wants uh, uh, us to work. So, of course, it will take time, especially when you have colleagues responsible for profit making. <laughs> And the others are responsible for making project green. Yep. So once again, it's somehow need to uh, we need to align these uh, th these things, and uh, uh, we would appreciate very much when uh, our colleagues with the club will share their experience, how they manage to to align all these uh, different approaches. It's a big job, because and serious issue because we. Uh, we, we all have, uh, as, as institutions, we, the government set us, uh, for us target or KPIs. We need to reach them. Uh, all our stuff depends on these achievements, but not <laughs> all are green and not all <laughs> really in, uh, work on the, on the um, uh, projects. So big issue. So 
as a general secretary, I hope that you will push somehow other colleagues to share their approaches, their views, their practices. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that uh, I am a big uh, uh, experts in terms of uh, um, project structuring, but it, for me,